Um, If you would, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. And let's see, while you're doing that, I need to double check something here. That's what I thought. Um, Deb, did you pass out the newsletters today here? What? Okay. Um, You know, my big, biggest heart's desire this year so far and my constant point of prayer has been to pray for you, you on Skype, you that are here, and that the Lord would really move on your behalf this year in a special way. (coughs) And, um, but it's been a burden of of my heart for you. Uh, When I say a burden, I don't mean that you're a burden. (laughs) It's the burden of the Lord is what I'm talking about. (coughs) Uh, In fact, it's a pleasure to be uh, constantly in prayer for all of you. And in, frankly, in a really broken state for you that, that you may just enter into something that takes you beyond and, and more close to Jesus. And, and uh, <clears throat> as a pastor, of course, this would be my, you know, I mean, my greatest desire. As a pastor, or that word is a shepherd, you want to get people to the feeding. But <clears throat> in this case, it's get you more to Jesus, I mean, to the Jesus that you love, to the Jesus that you want. And um, <clears throat> I really can't tell you how deeply that is in my heart, that, that this year be a, um, a turning point in some areas for you. <clears throat> um, and I believe that, that one of the things, and I believe this only because the Lord keeps hammering it to me, one of the things that's going to help bring that about <clears throat> is the reality that we're in Christ. And, and I really, you know, because uh, I, I spend a lot of time talking about Christ in you, and I believe, I believe in that. Um, but if there's not a genuine, not just theological, but a genuine establishment of being in Christ, um, then when you fail to demonstrate Christ in some way <clears throat> toward those around you, towards people on your job, people at, at home or wherever, it can be, it can be pretty devastating because you, you love the Lord. I mean, and you want the Lord and you want people to get the Lord out of you. <laughs> you know, when something else comes out of you, and you don't have a foundation. I mean a real, again, you know, I mean a real foundation <clears throat> that you are secure in Christ, regardless of your failures, that, that his blood covers that and that his Holy Spirit was sent to, to continue to guide you into all truth. And he's there. And... <clears throat> But the truth he's going to guide you into first and foremost after your failure is to the truth of what was settled at Calvary. Okay, he's not going to he's not going to just first jump on you about what how you failed or how how it wasn't Jesus or whatever, because he wants to get you to him. And uh, excuse me, but I'm chewing on something and sounding sort of smacky here, but. So Ephesians chapter 2, and I'd like for us to look at verse uh, 15 and 16. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your... Unless, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong chapter here, still waking up. Um, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, to make in himself of two, one new man, so making peace... I like that little phrase there, so making peace. 
and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enemy thereby. <clears throat> A lot of times when we think about the cross, and particularly in its application to our life, um, we think about certain negative aspects. Oh no, the cross, you know what I mean? <laughs> <clears throat> you know, and that's 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 understandable because there's the, the cross deals with a lot of negatives. I mean, it deals with the fact of sins and uh, things in our lives, and it deals with the old nature <clears throat> and you know the things that it produces, and you know punishment and hell and the curse of the law. You know, the cross deals with a lot of negatives. You know, it's like. Um, it's like that's, that's almost the strongest dealing many times that we're aware of, mainly because we're not perfect yet. <laughs> Nobody is yet perfect. And so the Lord's dealing with us. We'll praise God. <clears throat> but again, not under condemnation because there's no condemnation where? In Christ. <clears throat> so he's not, he's not ultimately trying to deal with us about uh, condemning us uh, and rejecting us. And, but he does reject <clears throat> uh, the things that we do that bring the curses of the law or the things that we do that end up in sin or <clears throat> the things that we do that, that um, come short of the glory of God, those kind of things. <clears throat> and, and yet, as I was thinking about the cross and its... You know, it's like, it's like if the cross had legs and walked in the room, some of us might go, uh-oh, here comes the cross, you know? <laughs> oh, oh no. yeah, you know, oh, let's shh, be quiet and be good, you know? <clears throat> and, uh, okay. <clears throat> but one thing I realize is that Paul wrote this letter of Ephesians from prison in Rome. And this book is the main book that teaches us about being in Christ and our security and, and the love that he has for us regardless of failures and all this stuff. I mean, I was amazed when I thought about it. I went, oh my God, this is, this, this is what he found to comfort him while he's in prison for standing up for Jesus was that he is secure in Christ and that he is, Jesus wanted him close and, you know, those kind of things. And, <clears throat> you know, as I thought about it, I thought, you know, everything he writes is up. Up in heavenly places, seated in Christ Jesus. I mean, really, you know, <clears throat> in other words, we can be up emotionally. But just as sure as you're up emotionally, you're going to be down emotionally eventually. I mean, that's just, that's just life. You know what I mean? And so you're going, <clears throat> man, that was a good sermon. Or, man, I, the Lord shared something good with me. And so we're up. But if we're just up emotionally, you, you kind of get my point. If you're just up emotionally, the devil or circumstance or life can come along with a baseball bat and knock that down. <clears throat> you know. And... Um, and then there is the loss <clears throat> of that uh, security and joy. And then we don't have confidence. And then we might have probably have fears. And then we, we are susceptible. 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 I think we all understand this. This is nothing new to anybody here. You know. <clears throat> But Paul, Paul is the man God sent and had him write down all this stuff. And, to, and, to, and he even says, to be an example, <clears throat> he said, follow me while I follow Christ. He didn't say, follow me. Right. You know, as long as I'm following Christ, you can follow me because I'm going to Jesus. <laughs> you know, and then it's okay. But it's, the minute I stop following Christ, drop off, okay. <clears throat> but here he is, sitting in a prison cell. And you, you do realize that eventually he died in Rome as a prisoner. <clears throat> they cut off his head. 
Okay. Well, we know that <clears throat> it doesn't affect us too deeply until you realize it's the same thing as decapitation. It's the same thing as, let's say, the Arabs, if they catch a, <clears throat> an American in their country and then they, show, they put him before a camera and they put it on YouTube and he says, you know, he has to deny everything and whatever, and then they, right there in front of them, they cut his head off. I mean, is that, is that shocking? Okay, so when we say Paul was decapitated, that's what we're talking about. <clears throat> that's the real possibility while he's writing this. He's in a Roman prison. <laughs> and what is he writing around? It says, you know, blessed be the, this is the very first couple of verses, you know, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Who hath predestined, da, 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 who has adopted us, who has da, 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 and he's just going on, and you're going, you know, where is this guy at the circus or something? And because he's so woohoo. <laughs> and you realize that there is there is something, there's a power, there's something in this reality of being in Christ that can get you through things that something else may not and that God's wisdom in putting you in Christ has eternal power in that reality and, and it can take us out of prison even while we're physically still in it. <clears throat> we all know we've all been through junk that, that you know, drags us down. <clears throat> I want to read that same... Um, those same scriptures in another translation. <clears throat> um, and then I want to pull out just a couple of phrases. Well, I really did just uh, wake up and not have much sleep. That's <laughs> I may have to go to contacts or something to someday. <clears throat> um, by abolishing in his flesh the law and its commandments and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. And in this one body, to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. Wow, his purpose. His purpose. Thus making peace. <clears throat> um, One of the, there's two little phrases that I particularly liked that was in that. <clears throat> and one of them was, and the way that it was worded was just really good. To create in himself. To create in himself. That was one of the phrases I really liked. And the other one was, <clears throat> through the cross. Anybody, anybody see the cross with legs walking in the room now? And we go, woo <laughs> You know, you see what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, it was through the cross that he did this. And he brought us nigh unto the Lord. And he, you know, brought this thing about. And yes, he's dealing with stuff that's not him, but he's also loving us through that cross. That's where the love of God was manifested. And we, we, oh Lord, help us. I mean, I almost, I almost could break down and cry right now because the, we, we have, we, sometimes we get so focused on what's wrong and therefore what the cross has to deal with that we don't see that that was the greatest manifestation of the love of God, that the love of God. For the love of God, people. <laughs> that he, <clears throat> that that is the clearest manifestation that he loved us, that to create in himself one new man, therefore making, by which making peace through the cross, through the cross. <clears throat> and, um, you know, that, that the wording there too, that, was special to me was to create 
in himself. One new man, okay? And that new man is us. See, we were, we were joined with him, and we are his body. And he is that man, and yet we are part of that man because we're the body of Christ. We're members of him. So that new man is us. I mean, he's the same, so the only thing new about it's us. We've been added in. <clears throat> and the, uh, the other thing is, we were added in not because we were perfect or good or right or anything else. We were added in before we were right. That's right. <laughs> That's his heart. That's his heart, and that's what we need to see. <clears throat> to create in himself one new man. And again, it doesn't say to create, you know, one new man. He didn't go, okay, I'm God, and right out here in front of me, I'm going to create this new man, this new creation, this new reality. He didn't do it out here in the world or out here. He created it in himself. You talk about security. You know. You know, it's like, it's like if, if God the Father really loves something and the devil, you know, because it talks about the devil coming up, standing before the, the, the throne and accusing the brethren. Are you familiar with that scripture? That he's the accuser of the brethren. Well, you know, what about, what about that Jill when she did so-and-so, you know? And, and, uh, or what about, you know, Lindsay when she, you know, bringing up all this junk about us before the Lord and saying, get him. But if God wanted you to be safe, if the Father wanted you to be safe, he hid you Amen. from the devil. Amen. Where were you hid? In Christ. <laughs> and the devil goes, well, I'm going to go in there and, uh, never mind, Jesus. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, don't want to mess with the boss, you know what I mean? <laughs> or the boss's son. <laughs> It's like, well, I, I'll, I will scour heaven and earth and hell to find this, this hiding place for the, what he loves, and I'll mess with it, man. I'll do everything I can to destroy it. So he searches everywhere and goes, where did you hide? You know? <laughs> Jesus goes, they're hidden me. And they're not just hid in there, they were made one with me. And I will never, ever let go of them. That's what he says. Because he won't let go of us because we're one with him. You know, it's like, I think I'm going to let go of my hand. You know, good luck with that. You know what I mean? It's like the only way to do that is whack, you know, with a machete or something like that. Jesus, it, it's settled, man. It's, it's finished and it's fixed. <clears throat> so... Um, so he's created this, this which is us, in himself, to make in himself that which is now considered to be him. Him. You say, now you're not Jesus, but you're one with Jesus. And you have Jesus' life. And you also have his protection and all the resources that come uh, by being one with him. So, <clears throat> um, what the thought that I had is when he created this in himself before we were even born, what he is, we will become. But before we even become it, he's made that settled in heaven. We're one with him. Okay. Before we manifest it, I mean. You see what I'm saying? And long, you know, you're going to, let me tell you, from this day forward, you're going to still make a lot of mistakes. It doesn't change, you know, it doesn't knock Jesus off the throne. He's on the throne. You know what I mean? We go, well, I sinned, and Jesus, you know, you look up there, where is he? He's over on the dirt. We knocked him off the throne with our failures. No. He's always on the throne. And what that, what does that mean? When he sat down, he finished the work. He's always on the throne. That's what that means. When he sat down, it's finished. It's not like, 
you know, well, I got to get up and go to the bathroom or something. You know, <laughs> he's, he's sat down. It's done. It's finished. He's, it's settled. That's what it's trying to convey to us. You know, and he's not jumping up and down. It is in his heart, it's done. And, and, when, and the way he wants it is when someone looks upon you, he wants you to look upon you as one with him, as him, as him. You know, all right. Well, yeah, sometimes we fail, sometimes we do stuff, and people don't see Jesus in you, but he didn't come into you so that people would look upon you as one with him. He put you in him. That's a, that, you know, Joan's right. There's a big difference. The difference is he's not waiting for the full manifestation of perfection in you, thank God, or that's going to be, that's going to be a while. <clears throat> it says throughout the eternal ages, we're going to be learning the riches of Christ. So it may actually... You know, e eternity may be learning the eternal life that we have, which is Christ. Okay. <clears throat> um, as, uh, as one who created in himself, he, he actually became a recreator, really, because he was the creator of the, the world and everything. <clears throat> the first creation. But by his, well, you know, it talks about that over in... Uh, what is it? Uh, Second Corinthians five, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Second Corinthians five seventeen. <clears throat> in the in the first creation, when he created everything, I mean, think about it. Let's go all the way back to Genesis. Let's go. Let's go there. In Genesis, before there's any mention of the devil. Let's go there before there's any mention of the fall. Okay, so everything's pristine. Everything's beautiful. There's, there's no sin. There's no devil. There's no evil. There's no anything. <clears throat> Adam and Eve is there. And when he created these different things, he created them. And after he created, he looked at them. And there was a certain amount of satisfaction and what did he say after he created him? It is good. It is good. You know, God's going, this is good. You know? <clears throat> well, that's, that's great, but this new creation found in verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. <clears throat> you know, that first creation... He declares it good. This one, this creation, he declares it him. <laughs> okay, now, that's, that's good ground, see. See, and it says that we were placed in Christ and raised up far above all principalities and powers and mights and dominions and every name, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. Anybody find insur uh, assurance there and that that far above all principalities and powers and mights and far above okay you say well i don't seem to be far above because the devil's hitting me today <clears throat> he didn't say christ in you in that in your walk down here he said you are secure even though those things are happening and you need to find the joy of it and the assurance and the peace and the things that he died so that that would be your reality. <clears throat> that first creation, that's great. You know, this is it's good. That, that was good. But it ain't good enough. I want you, you could say, I want you close. That he, Jesus would say that. I want you close. Um, but I want you closer than just being beside me. I want you being in me. I want you being of me. And again, identified by others, but identified by you first, that you're one with him, you know. That you make that identification. And then it becomes such a, such a strong thing with you that it's like the armor of God, even when you're going through stuff down here. It's like it's heavenly reality made into strong armor when when fiery darts try to hit you 
and say, well, you're this or you failed or you're that or whatever. Instead, you can be at rest. Now, there's times you may not be at rest. There's times that we're not really plugged into the Lord like we should be, and so we start going through all sorts of freakouts. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We start going through all this stuff, but it doesn't change the truth. Can I get an amen? It doesn't change the reality. And it doesn't change him, and it doesn't change his view. And it, guess what? It doesn't change the scriptures. You go to the scriptures, and they steal the same thing. You know what I mean? It's like, well, they're saying I'm still in Christ. Maybe the scripture don't know what kind of state I'm in right now. Well, that's, there's your problem, see. You're living in the wrong state. <clears throat> Many of you are going, I know, I'm here in Texas. I hate it. <clears throat> That's not what we're talking about. <clears throat> and it proves that you're not living where he puts you. <clears throat> but we'll talk about this again in August. <clears throat> <clears throat> so this, the, this translation here said <clears throat> that this, is, this was his purpose. To create in himself. And he purposed to create in himself us. Wow. And to do that through the cross. Um, let's, let's go uh, to Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> Colossians 3 and verse 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man <clears throat> that is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Um, wherefore, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. <clears throat> all right? You got several things here. Verse 9 talks about you put off the old man. <clears throat> Verse 10 says, we put on the new man that is renewed in knowledge <clears throat> after him. Verse 11 says, wherefore then, there's neither Greek nor Jew, bond nor free, that your reality now is that there's Christ and there's Christ in you. You're in Christ and there's Christ in you. Okay? And that's the reality. <clears throat> All right. So let's... Let's break it down. Let's look, let's look at verse 9 and have a little look at this thing. <clears throat> Lie not one to another. Okay, so you read that and you immediately come under condemnation. <clears throat> I don't, but you do, or some of you do. You read that and go, lie not one to another, and you're going, oh, my God, you know, just yesterday. If I forget yesterday, this morning when I came in the door, they said, how you doing? I said, great. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, it's just, <clears throat> you know, and, and uh, uh, there's, that, you know, this freak out going on, but but I want to challenge you with the truth the way God sees it this morning and, and do that by looking at this scripture in light of God's view instead of your little carnally minded, fearful, I, I fail all the time and not, not embrace this reality that should keep you through all kind of stuff, including misinterpreting the scriptures. <clears throat> All right, so let's read it now by adding the rest of the sentence, okay? Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Okay, <clears throat> and, and well, let's just go on and add, because it's still one sentence, and have put on the new man that is, that is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. <clears throat> He's not talking about general lying as a, as a thing, He's talking about lying about the truth of what Jesus did at the cross and where you are supposed to be located and the way you're supposed to be viewing yourself. You lie every time you say, God, is, I'm separated from God. God doesn't want me. I don't, how can God ever use me? Why would God even want to mess with me? I, you know, I ought to just go eat some worms or whatever how that saying goes. <clears throat> you know, And you're freaking out. 
when he says, if God could talk to you, and he is talking to you, this is how he talks to you, this is his word. But if he showed up on the scene, he'd, when you're saying all that, he'd say, stop lying about where you're at about my view of you, about my love for you, about what I've done for you, about how I see you. Stop lying and saying you're all this junk when in reality, by the cross, I dealt with that old man. And not only that, not only that, but I now created you into a new man, which is me. And that's where you are. Stop lying and saying you're not there. I didn't say I wasn't there. Well, you said you were talking from another place. And going through stuff. And can you see the Lord's heart? Can you see the Lord's love? He says, I don't want you going through. You're going through a bunch of stuff that you, you don't need to go through. And, it's, and it hurts you and it tears you down and it keeps us from being together. And I, I died through that cross to create in me one new man so that we could be as close as close as we could possibly be. So, you know, and then he gets a little angry and he says, stop lying. You're with me. Stop that. <clears throat> Isn't it funny how we read the scriptures constantly from a position of the law and the old covenant instead of from the truth of the cross and the resurrection? <laughs> you know. So then we're, we spend all of our time trying to get somewhere. Oh, I want to get with the Lord. Oh, I want, to, I want to be close to the Lord, you know. You're his collarbone. He's going, you're pretty close. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else I can do. I died to, to create in me you so that we would always be together, that where I go, you would go, and that when I sit down, you sat down. Well, I haven't sat down. I'm, I'm fearful and I'm going through this. And I'm go Lord, help me. He's going, look to the cross. But first look to my heart. Then look to the cross. Then look to the reality of the resurrection. I thought it was interesting. It didn't say that, that the creating himself one new man, thereby making peace through the resurrection. I thought it was interesting that he said through the cross. <laughs> Because you were with him through that cross, too. You were joined with him. He who knew no sin was made to be sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We, and he carried us through that whole process so that we would be dead but alive. Dead to everything that is contrary to him, but alive because now we're one with him. That's true in Christ, regardless of how you act or whatever you've done wrong. <clears throat> and he's saying, quit lying about it because his first view is you in Christ. Not, you know. <clears throat> I, there are some people who teach this the opposite, that your first view is Christ in you. No, I mean, they are. They say, well, you, you can't start and it can't be anything true or real until you, you get born again. And then once it's Christ in you, then you're in Christ. But the truth is you were placed in Christ, in the reality, the greatest reality of it, you were in Christ before the foundation of the world. Go back to Ephesians, the first chapter, and really, really look at it, Amen. you know. And then it was, if it was, if you can't get it settled there, it was done 2,000 years ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> settled, you know. It, it didn't happen when you got saved. <clears throat> All right. Sorry, I've got to get off on these little, well, these little tangents that I, that I, I it bothers me that people with a Bible can't really just follow the order, you know, <laughs> you know, you and me and I and you, you know, <clears throat> anyway, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, we're all going to, it's all going to be based on this here book, you know. I mean, the reality of it, you know, when we stand before God, I just want to, 
I just want to say when he says lie not, he's not talking about, you know, stop just in general telling lies. What good's that going to do? Where's, is, is that going to be an increase of Christ or is that you just stop and lying? That's not new covenant. Old covenant is stop it or you're going to go to hell. New covenant is you will stop it because Christ is your life. I mean, that is. That's the new covenant. And even if you hadn't stopped it yet, you're still you're lying about this, that you are accepted in the beloved. <clears throat> I just, you know, I was just hoping Kelly would have sung that song today, accepted in the beloved. But <clears throat> what? Oh, she couldn't find the music. <clears throat> Well, that was the devil. <laughs> I, that, that was my next phrase. But don't worry, Kelly, we're still in Christ. <clears throat> All right. But, you know, there is something in this, in this scripture that we can do. I mean, you, you, the way that you stop lying about this reality is, is that you, what is it, verse uh, 10, uh, <clears throat> Put on the new man that is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. See, there's that creation, that word creation again. <clears throat> um, but this, there is the need for a renewing of the mind. Most of us have a carnal mind, <clears throat> and then we stick a lot of Bible facts in there and think that makes us spiritual. Yeah, and, and cluttered. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, really, you, you know, you can stuff all sorts of religious knowledge in there. I want Jesus. Amen. I don't want more religious knowledge. I don't, I don't even want depth. I just want the Lord. And, I, and if he says, this is what I want you to know, and someone else says, oh, that's so deep. I'm going, look, I just want Jesus, okay? I ain't deep. I, I ain't anything. Jesus is everything, and I'm in him. That's all I want. <clears throat> well, one of the things he says is, there needs to be a renewing of the mind to this image of this new man, this, cre this thing that has been created in him. We need to form within us a basic mindset that has been renewed to the reality as God sees it. And again, <clears throat> as a form of armor as we go through this life, that we are anchored in the reality of Christ, that we're never separate from him. Never, never, never. You're never separate. I know, I know, religion has taught us, well, if you sin, you're separated from God. Okay, so that means, what, you know what that does to people? <clears throat> okay, this is all my opinion, but I'm going to tell you what it does to people. What it does to people is they say, well, now God hates me. I'm separate. I mean, this happened. I sinned, so I'm separate from God, so he hates me, so... It makes me want to just go off and hide and not let him see me because I'm so ugly and dirty and, you know, da-da-da-da. But the scriptures say, come boldly to the throne of grace. When I'm messed up, that's the one I want to run to. You know? You know, and I don't run, you know, I'm making a picture here, but I don't run into the throne room and I'm all, all filthy and needing Jesus. And he goes, oh, get away. And he starts running from me. You know? Get it right first. We can't get it right without him. It's just wrong thinking. You know, the first place we should run to is Jesus. Well, we go, well, he doesn't want me because I messed up. He loves you. He made you one with him. You're one with him. It's settled in his heart. He goes, I see you in me first. You go, I see me messed up first. He goes, stop lying. <laughs> God cannot lie. And he says you're in him forever. You're secure in him. That he, nothing can separate us from him. <clears throat> nothing separates you from that love that he has for you. As long as we're embracing that, we're, 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 we're like spring. We're like flowers that are blooming. Because we're embracing God's reality that's already settled. You don't have to do anything. You just have to say, yes, Lord. 
you know? You know well, it's too hard, you know? I just, I, it's just easier for me to just be yucky and separated and act like God doesn't love me anymore and that I'm too bad. And how could he ever love me? Just, you know, this is Randy again, just shut up <laughs> and say, yes, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I, if you say it, it's good enough for me. Let God be true and every man be a liar. Huh? Yeah, well, that's who we're talking about. Let God be true and every, you know, I'm not pointing out here, you know, because you are a liar. And I am too. If we're not saying what he says. <clears throat> All right. So, <clears throat> Over in uh, uh, the second chapter, in verse uh, 9, well, let's read 9 through 11 again. We, let, we read Colossians 3, 9 through 11. Let's read 2, 9 through 11. <clears throat> Colossians 2, verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised, with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. All right, <clears throat> number one, for in him is all of the fullness. You say, Lord, I want more fullness in my life. I'm, I'm, I'm weak or I'm, you know, I'm empty or I'm, I'm a very lacking person or I need more God or I need to get closer. I need more, you know, Spiritual reality, however, it, it, it doesn't matter to me how you put it. Because <laughs> all fullness dwells in him. <clears throat> all right. Here's this carnal mind again. Okay, well, he's over there on that throne, and I'm over here, and all fullness dwells in him, so i got to get to him. You're in him. It didn't say all fullness dwells with him so that he could give it to you. It says it's in him, and you're in him. <clears throat> It's, it's a little bit like a glass, you know, and you're on this ship, this liner going across the Pacific Ocean, and you get about halfway there, and the glass says, you know, I want fullness. That's how it thinks. It goes, I want fullness. So it sees a pitcher of water over there that represents Jesus and says, please put some, please, Lord, just a few drops. Just fill me a little more. I just want you so bad. Yeah. <laughs> when it ought to say, now here's, you know, this is slightly off, but when it ought to say to the person holding the glass, holding me as the glass, throw me in the ocean. You throw it out there that not only is it in the ocean, the ocean's in it, and it's all around it, and it sinks down, and it's, got, it's full. It's all fullness is so big, it can't even fully contain it all. And goes, eh, okay, stop whining. There's where you already are. <laughs> when I say whining, I'm, to God it's whining. To you it's... <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> praying, yeah. <laughs> and trying to be spiritual. <laughs> you know, uh, I really want you. You know, he takes you, throws you in the ocean. <laughs> fullness everywhere. You know, you're more full than full. You know. Well, and that's the truth. That's the way you, you're seen. You're complete in him. <clears throat> but but that completion is an in Christ reality, not a Christ in you reality. Think about it. Because as, as you live in this earth, there's lots of flakes. You're flaky. You know what I mean? You're a very flaky person. <laughs> but in Christ, you're not. I mean, think about it. It's really true. And that secures you through all of this stuff. It secures you through all of this stuff. So remember that you are complete, but only in him, not just by him. Well, where are you located? 
Don't lie. In him. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Um, did I actually, what time did I start, Scott? I don't even have a clue. Uh, oh, yeah, wow. I'm sure it seems long to you, but it doesn't seem like it's already been 45 minutes to me. <clears throat> John 17, Gospel of John. <clears throat> we'll end with this, this stuff here. Yeah, this, this stuff. John 17. <clears throat> now, remember, this is, one of Jesus' last prayers before he's taken away to the cross. And it's a long one. I mean, you know, I have a, I have a red letter Bible. This will give you an idea. The red letters, of course, being Jesus. And he's praying. And you know, he doesn't pray anything like us. <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> Okay, let's look in verse 23, John 17, 23. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Stop right there. The perfection comes by being in one. Not, by, not made perfect by one, but per, create in himself. Complete in himself. And you can't, you can't see the reality of that except with spiritual eyes, folks. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everything in this world is going to tell you con that you're contrary to that reality. But that reality is God's reality and it's your reality. And if you go contrary to it, you're just lying against it. Mm -hmm. You are only made perfect in one. And it's that I and you and you and me. It's that union. It's that, it's that glass being thrown into the middle of the ocean and not only being filled, but being surrounded with the fullness in him. He's the ocean. <laughs> and there's more him that can fully fit in you right now. <clears throat> but you haven't even got... What can yet? <laughs> what can fit in you? Because there's more room. You got bubbles <laughs> that can be popped where he can fill in there, you know. And so don't get upset next time he pops your bubble. <laughs> <clears throat> Burst your little bubble. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's look at a, a couple more of these scriptures and let's try to look at these. Um, by being more than religious or more than Bible scholars, let's really try to see his heart when he says this stuff because this really is, he's about to go to the cross and this really is the stuff that's on his heart before he goes to the cross. And he's not freaking out here. He's not, you know, understand what I mean? This is what he, it says, uh, that was his purpose, to create in himself. Okay, <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's look at verse 2, John 17, 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life and to, to as many as thou hast given him. Just a very simple thing, that he wants to give eternal life. And again, eternal life, folks, is life without beginning and without end. Okay, that's not, eternal life is more than just saving you um, from hell. That would be life now when you got saved and forever. But eternal life was without beginning. Because it's eternal. <laughs> That's got to be Christ. <clears throat> okay, let's drop down to verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them whom thou hast given me, for they are thine. And here is this spirit when I read it, because he's, you know, I'm only being moved by the, by the Lord and his heart in my prayers lately, and I pray a lot. When I read this, I pray for them. I just, I just 
could have folded up and wept because those, from where I'm at spiritually, those aren't just words, you know. He's praying for us that we would come into this reality and live by it and be with him instead of being so separate all the time. And so, you know, there's no words I can put behind what I saw here, but I was deeply moved by that. Verse 11, <clears throat> And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Oh, my gosh. He's saying, I'm raising up, and they're raising up in me, but they're still in the world, and I'm not. Okay, well, I remember in my early days going, well, that's fine for you. You know, you're, you, you got it made. You know, you're up there, but we're down here. But here's, here's his heart and here's his words, you know. Uh, these are in the world. <clears throat> uh, keep them through thine own name, those whom thou hast given me. Number one, keep that which is already in me. And, and what is his prayer throughout most of this? I mean, I'm going to skip a bunch of this. His prayer is that we may be one, that may, we, we may embrace that oneness that he's about to die for. Okay? <clears throat> and then... So, he, so he's, we're already given to him in his mind. And his understanding of given to me is given to me to create in me, in, to be mine, to be of me, to be one, to be forever together, you know to be forever together. And then he says, and that they may be one as we are one. That's a totally different kind of oneness than of any other kind of oneness ever in existence. That is um, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See, and that, there's, the, there's the mystery of the Trinity is they're three in one, right? Okay, they're three in one. You know, in the example of People say St. Patrick came up with, I don't know if he did or didn't, but <clears throat> the, the three-leaf clover, you know, and he supposedly said, see, it's one clover, but it has three parts to it, you know. <clears throat> um, we are spirit, soul, and body, three parts, but we're one person. Okay, that's the kind of oneness that is God oneness. It's not, you know, it's not even marriage oneness. Now, marriage oneness should be that. Do, do, do. <laughs> but it's not. Okay. So, we, so it's better not to look there, lest you get discouraged. <clears throat> Let's look at God oneness. Let's look at God oneness. And let's realize that we were brought into that too. And now there's, as it were, I'm just going to say, a four-leaf clover. Well, that's lucky. Thank, thank God for Scott. <clears throat> All right. Uh, verse 16 and 17. <clears throat> they are not of this world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. Okay, so he's, you know, he's talking to those who are still in the world but are in him. And what does he say of you even while you're still in the world? You're not of it. Right. Now, he's not pointing his finger to you and saying, now, you're not of it. Trying to get us to line up. He's saying the, to the Father, the eternal truth as they see it, they're not of this world. Now, you sometimes freak out and think I'm of the world or I'm, you know, I'm not what God wants and all this stuff. Stop, you know, stop lying. And look at what he says. You're not of the world. You never will be of the world. You are of him in Christ. That's his heart. That's where he sees it from. But then he says, but sanctify them through the word. Well, 
that's not justify them through the word. You're already justified. That's why you're not of the world. Justification through faith in all that he did at the cross has settled all that. You're one with him. You're with him. Now sanctify them through the word. Not just teach them justification, but sanctify it, which is to separate and set them apart unto him. In their understanding, be renewed in your mind to the image of the one that you've been joined to. Instead of walking as an individual Christian on this earth going, I'm just trying to be a good Christian. I'm just, I just want to be loved by God, but he never shows up. He's showing up right here. <clears throat> Verse 21. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they, may, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Okay, so all he's praying for is this same oneness. That's all he wants. That's all he cares about. That's what he's dying for. That's through the cross he's going to bring this about. It's his heart. It's not theology. Jesus is not giving us a theological lesson on Bible truth. He's opening his heart of hearts to what he wants pertaining to us and what he died to, to bring about. <clears throat> Verse 22, And the glory which thou gavest me I have given unto them that they may be one even as we are one. All right. This verse... I, don't, I think almost no Christians read this verse. Not the last part. I mean, you know, hopefully at least the deeper life people read that. But I don't think they read the first part. And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given unto them. I constantly hear from preachers and ministers and people talk and say, Oh, no, God will not his, share his glory with anyone. Don't, be, don't put your hand to the glory of God. God won't. He won't. He just says right here, and the glory which I gave us me, I give to them. I mean, that, it just bugs me. It, it... Careful, Randy. It bugs me that we just don't read his word and then see his heart in it and go, well, you know, that couldn't be right. because Not just because we go, no, it says it right here, but because we go, I, you know what? I see his heart in this. He's dying that we would enter into this glory with him. You know, in other words, you're, it's not a, a, a sword fight, two people with theological, you know, but it's, you, you know his heart, and, and even if they win, they didn't win, you know, because they don't know the Lord's heart. All they know is their theological stance. Um, and then also verse 23, we read it, but let's read it again. I am them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. And this was, uh, I think I was like three months old when I read this scripture and went, oh my God, do you, I, I remember we're sitting in a, a group, a circle, you know, playing guitars and singing and sharing scriptures, you know, the group of us that was there. And I, I shared this. And I went, you, do you realize what he says? That he loves, the, uh, what's the word? Know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. God loves us just as much as he loves Jesus. And I went, does he love Jesus? And they went, oh, my God, yes, he loves Jesus. You know, of course, we're all, you know, three, I'm three months old in the Lord. <laughs> but I'm going, I know he loves Jesus. He really loves Jesus. But Jesus just said now through the cross and through all this stuff, he loves us just the same way as he loves Jesus. We can stop feeling unloved. We can stop, you know, I thought I'm, I'm bursting. You know, <laughs> oh, my God. Do we get it? You know, go to a Baptist church and share that, and they go, yeah, hey man, you're new, so it's exciting. <laughs> we had that stuff happen. I'm not, I'm sorry. This, I'm not, didn't mean to bring up Baptist, but <clears throat> per, yeah, you know, just pick up, pick one. <laughs> All right, I need to finish up here real quick. Verse 24, Father, I, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. That's what I wanted to bring out. 
He so wants us to be with him where he's at. And where he is at in Christ is the new creation, the creation that he wants us all to dwell in now and quit dwelling in the old creation. And then finally, verse 26, <clears throat> And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love with which thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. And he's, the last part of this whole thing, after talking about nothing but securing us in his love, and in Christ, and in his prayers, and in his everything, all of this stuff, the very last thing he says in this chapter <clears throat> and in this prayer is just simply, here's what I want to be in them. In other words, he's talked about us in Christ the whole time, and he uses one verse to talk about what's in us. That specifically, you know, not just the combination, or, but specifically in us. And that's the love that he has for us. He wants it to be in us down here in Christ in us and that we would love enough to to not you know for a good man we would yet die for them throw ourselves in front of a bullet but yet he died for the very ones that would be our enemies the very ones that and he wants that love to be so strong that we we don't have to gauge and evaluate and you know value the person before we lay down our line before we take that bullet that we just go man but and lord let me end with this but that's the last thing and the last verse he said in this prayer he'll work on that and he says in the chapter before i'm sending the holy spirit and he'll be working on you but now i want you to know that you're in me and there's this settled reality of my heart. Get my heart out of it, not some theological stance. Father, we just ask you to continue this year with the things that are precious to you toward us and to bring us, Lord, into an understanding that, is, that, that wards off lying against the truth and that makes your heart happy and that comforts you that we would believe you in the face of all of this stuff that assails our feelings and emotions that we would still find you in a greater stance than what we're experiencing in the old creation and that the new creation would override every time so father continue to nurture us your children and continue to feed us and continue to love us uh, through this union that we have with Christ. We thank you for in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We're dismissed. Um, did you have something?